Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head up towards Gothenburg once again, Jutebor as you'd say in Swedish, which as I've told you many a time is a V craft beer city over here. So for this one, we are having a look at a beer that is half Swedish, half English. For the Swedish side of things, we're going to return it to Steve Beyer's Bravery once again, who are probably one of the better known Swedish craft breweries worldwide these days. And this is a collaboration beer that they did with Verdant Brewing, who come from Falmouth in Cornwall. So you've seen me review a good number of Verdant beers, namely when I was uh, in Durham in England for that period of time, and uh, they're a very, very solid IPA brewery in fact. It's been a long time, I think about a year now actually, since I must have had my last beer from them. But a shout out to the guys at Hopknocker in Durham who were supplying me with those beers when I was over there. But really curious to see what these guys have done when they put together. This beer was released on the 7th of May. Uh, sorry, the 7th of June, rather, 2019, through the small parties in Seistenbolaga, and it's simply called Session IPA. It comes in at 4.5%. So, really looking forward to seeing how this one turns out, and as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So, anyway, as is usual with my reviews, then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done, both from Steve Berriott's and from Verdant Brewing. No doubt we'll add some more to both in the fairly near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city state county prefecture whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the swedish beers that i've reviewed and another one for all the english beers this beer will appear in both of those lists and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, first off, to tell you a little bit about Steve Berriot's Bravery then, so on to that. So as I've told you before, Steve Berriot's Bravery are based in Gothenburg and they were founded by two guys, Niels Hillcrantz and Richard Simonson, and this pair own two bars that share the one kitchen. This is Bar Shino and the Hagabion's Cafe, which you can find on Lina Gatan in the city, and they both opened up back in 2007. So originally the idea was to brew a few beers that they could sell in the bar and this led to them kegging the beers and then selling them to other pubs and then eventually they started bottling the beers in November of 2014. So the original beers were mainly English and German styles but of course the thing that really put Steve Berts on the map was expanding into the more hoppy American styles of beer. The original head brewer was Olli Anderson who is a, the, one of the co-owners of OO Brewing and he's working on that now solely um, but he was replaced for a period of time by Barnaby Struve who was president at Three Floyds and he stayed with them for a little bit of time too. But they've also recently opened up a new brewery at Party Halarna where they brew 5,000 litres at any one time or in any batch, I guess I should say, and they're beginning to work on some sour beers as well, and they're starting to appear in the local Seistenbo Lagos, I believe, up in Gothenburg. I've not seen any of them making it down here yet, actually. But they started selling their beers in these kind of 440 milliliter cans uh, at the start of twenty, at the end of 2018, if I'm remembering correctly, and this means that they'll be able to export a lot more of their beers as well. But the current brew team is Ollie Banks, who used to work for uh, Beavertown in London, and Lucas Munro, who used to work for All In Brewing, which was one of the, uh, the the various gypsy brewers that are around Gothenburg now as well. But a very, very well-known Swedish brewery, particularly known for the Amazing Haze and uh, the GBG Beer Week beer. And, uh, you know, Ole Anderson, of course, is known for the Narangi and the Muddle as well, actually. So if you get the chance to try any of those kind of classic Swedish beers, I'm saying classic, but it was only like 2016 that they came out. Amazing Haze is one of the best known um, Swedish IPAs, actually. And that's one that you really need to check out. And if you can get the chance to try the Narangi from O as well. That's an absolutely beautiful beer too. But yeah, um, always cool to review new beers from Steve Beers, and it's cool to see them actually producing a few different styles and things like that now because they have become a lot more prolific than they were in the past, particularly with these kind of new local releases that we've going on here in Sweden now through say Stembolag as well. But that's all you really need to know about Steve Beers for the moment. If you want to learn a little bit more, of course, you can check out the brewery website in the description below. And as always, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and things. And that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out my other reviews that I've done from them before. So anyway, on to Verdant Brewing then. So as I've told you before with these guys, Verdant Brewing are based in Falmouth in Cornwall. And they were founded back in 2014 by Adam Robertson and James Heffron, who were later joined by Rich. So Adam was a designer by trade, and James had been a home brewer for a good number of years. And Rich was one of the electricians that helped them set up the brewery. And he later joined the, 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 the company as a partner, actually. But they all ordered their uh, brewing equipment back in 2014 and they started brewing their beers early in 2015. 
But initially they really struggled to get on the, their beers on the map because Cornwall has a very traditional ale culture uh, and people weren't really into the kind of big New England and West Coast IPAs and stuff like that but their beers proved to be a hit in the rest of the country so from what I understand with this brewery a lot of their beer was being sold in places like London and Bristol and stuff like that and not a lot of it being sold locally up until fairly recently but they're currently based in the Tregonigi uh, Industrial Estate which is in the west of the city and they recently opened up their bar in, on uh, Key Street after a crowdfunding exercise, I think that was back in 2018 that they did that as well, and it looks like a really nice little bar actually. It sells like kind of posh looking fish and chips and little fish plates and stuff like that. It's not really a kind of full restaurant if you like, but they do have a nice kind of fish kitchen there. Cornwall, of course, very well known for its fish and stuff like that. But one of the really well regarded English uh, IPA breweries these days, along with the likes of Cloudwater, Northern Monk, Magic Rock, and all of these kind of things, North Brewing Company as well. Uh, there's probably a few others, uh, Wylam. Uh, there's a few other breweries out there that are doing some really good uh, IPAs day and things too. So yeah, if you get the chance to try some of these Verdant Brewing beers, you're not going to be disappointed with them if you're a fan of the big hazy IPAs. So um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Verdant. Once again, if you want to learn a little bit more, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. And that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on at that brewery as well. But yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself and let's see how it goes. So as I mentioned to you at the start of the video, this one is is um a 4.5% Session IPA. The artwork on this one, of course, based on the new and improved GBG Beer Week artwork. The same with the last uh, double IPA review that I did from, uh, was that Northern Monk, if I'm remembering correctly? Um, so yeah, using similar styles of artwork on, on these beers. And I, from what I gather, I'm, I'll need to check this for when I'm actually naming the video. This beer, um, it, it is called Cross Verdant Session IPA. That's kind of what the, the actual official name of this one is, uh, on untapped and things like that. So I'll write that in the description for you below so you can know what to search for and things if you don't already write enough. But yeah, fairly simple artwork on this one. There you can see both Steve Barrett's Brewing and Verdant Brewing Company on there as well. But like I said, 4.5% Session IPA this one. And um, yeah, let's get it out and see how we get on then. Should be really nice. Two very two breweries with you know very big pedigrees when it comes to New England hazy IPAs. So um, yeah, and as you can see in terms of appearance, this one certainly isn't disappointing. So um, yeah, really nice. So with this beer, then if we hold it up to the light. I would describe this one as being more kind of yellow. In terms of its colour, it just looks like a kind of tropical fruit juice, and you're getting some lovely fruity notes coming out of this one as you open it up. I would, wouldn't bet against there being citra and mosaic in this one, but you can see a solid finger of quite a bumpy white head on this one. I would say it's a, a perfect white head rather than being creamy or anything like that. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see that this beer is pretty damn hazy. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, and just a few little ones heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it looks pretty much as you would expect from one of these New England IPAs. Now the interesting thing about the Session IPAs in my mind is that I've always found them to be a kind of a little, a little bit more bready and it, the malt base I've just always found is quite different. I've not reviewed one in maybe about a year or something like that. I've always gone for the regular IPAs and the, uh, the double IPAs. So I'm curious just to see how this one turns out particularly when it has two breweries with such kind of high IPA pedigrees behind them. So yeah, let's just have a taste of this one then and uh, we'll see how we get on with it. So yeah, let's get stuck in. This one is the, or we should look at the aroma rather, I didn't look at the aroma yet, brain's not working, I haven't filmed in a little while, but yeah, aroma with this one then, um, so yeah, this one to me, it actually reminds me of some of the Ale Farm beers, the Ale Farm IPAs that I'm getting across the water in Copenhagen, um, it's got this really nice almost lactosey, milky kind of quality to it which is interesting. Um, so it definitely has, I don't know if that would be uh, dextrose or lactose or what it would be in there, but it really has that almost sugary, milkshake quality to it. And I find that very, very nice. Definitely some nice oaty creaminess in there. A, a bit of the wheat smoothness coming through as well. But to me, it really leans towards that kind of sweet, milkshakey, sugary type thing, which is interesting. Um, yeah, I do actually wonder, when I go closer into the aroma, I do wonder if there's a bit of Simcoe in here. You know... It could be galaxy right enough, but I'm finding there's a lot of passion fruity notes in this one. And I've always found, you know, galaxy is a bit more of a kind of pungent beast, a uh, passion fruity beast, but Simcoe is just a little bit softer and more milky. So I do, I'm wondering if there's a little bit of uh, 
Simcoe in this one. I do think there's a bit of citra as well. So the fruity notes for me are passion fruit, mangoes definitely. I don't really get any orangey notes out of this one. I think this one might be a straight up citra and Simcoe. It might be a little bit old school kind of session IPA. So it could be citra and galaxy. But um, yeah, it could even just be straight up Simcoe to be honest with you. I think a little bit of mango in there, definitely some nice juicy passion fruits. It does have a little bit of a slightly almost apricot-y kind of note to it as well. It really reminds me of those little munch bunch yogurts, the apricot ones that my mum used to put in my lunchbox when I was a wee boy going to school. But for uh, this one, it's really a nice milky, um, fruit juicy, almost smoothie like IPA to be honest with you. On the green side of the hops, I would say more grassy rather than anything else. Um, not too much in the way of a floral character. This one, in terms of its aroma for me, really is pretty damn sweet, I have to say. It reminds me a lot of these Aelstorm beers. Maybe even the $10 Shake a little bit from Siren, actually, for those of you watching in England. The aroma for this one, for me, is really quite juicy and uh, and fruity rather than anything else, and quite sweet, almost like a milkshake type thing. So, um, yeah, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But I'm very curious to see how this one turns out. I've got a feeling this one might be pretty damn good, actually. So yeah, this one is the Collaboration Session IPA from Stieg Bertsbrugger in Gothenburg here in Sweden and Verdant Brewing over in uh, Falmouth in Cornwall in England. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja Skull. Yeah, I mean, first impression, really nice, drinkable, and it definitely, it, it kind of was what I was expecting. It does have that almost milkshakey IPA type sweet, sweetness to it. It really does have a good bit of creaminess to it. Little touch over carbonated in my opinion. There's just a little bit of crispness to the, the carbonation in this one. So in some ways that's a good thing, I guess, for the hot weather and stuff. But for me... Um, it's, it's maybe just, if you're having a New England type IPA, you just want it to be that little bit smoother and creamy. It's just, I just like my New England IPAs to be very, very creamy. But this one does have a little bit more of a kind of crisper element to it. And in fairness, I guess, when you've got a lighter alcohol content like this, and it's a session IPA, you do need that crispness in there. So I can see why they've done that, in fairness. But yeah. This beer gets a thumbs up from me. I will say I do like this one and I wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. It really has that, I, you know, you can see with this one why they call it a session IPA. And I'm finding that this beer, the further you go into the aftertaste, it really does get quite, um, so you really do get more of that kind of almost milkshakey, sugary sweetness that I was talking about. Yeah, it's good. Um, I think I'm maybe drinking this one just a little tad fresh right enough because there is a good bit of green from the uh, from the hops in this one. And I'm judge I'm guessing it says that this one is based before the 27th of November 2019, and I'm guessing that means that it's canned on the 27th of May 2019. So if it's on the, it's, it was in Seistan Balag, it must have picked this one up from Gothenburg about a week um, before. Um, they've actually started selling it. So maybe this one needs to sit in the can for sort of two weeks or something. Personally, I've always thought with the New England IPAs, it's best if you have them for like two or th maybe three weeks um, and just let the green side of the hops kind of go down a little bit. So I maybe should have checked this one before we're open up because you do get a little bit of the green side of the hops still um, from this one. But um, yeah, that said, very, very nice sessionable IPA this. I mean, you wouldn't expect anything less when you've got these two breweries involved. So this one, I would say, let's just try and break down this flavour a little bit then. You can feel the pale malt in this one, you can feel the base of the beer straight away. That blankets the middle of your tongue. Um, the further that you go into the flavour, the middle of your palate just kind of sweetens up a little bit and you get these kind of, I don't know if that would be dextrose or lactose, it say watch kind of thing on the can. It just says wheat malt to be honest. Um, but yeah, I think there's a little bit of that kind of, sugary note to this one and there's a couple of breweries like I say Ale Farm use this and I'm wondering if it's the yeast that gives it because obviously the yeast can play a huge role in the beer and there's more and more breweries kind of turn into this so I do wonder if it is something to do with the yeast 
strain that they're using in these beers too but you can really feel the middle of your palate kind of sweetening up with this one the further you go into it and you start to get some of the more grainy notes out of the beer the further you go into the aftertaste as well but definitely some nice smooth wheaty qualities coming out of the beer also you can pick up a little bit of the creaminess of the oats in there too um, but really it leans towards that milkshake sugary kind of thing the further that you go into the flavour as well. Let's just put the last little bit of this one in. So malt base is kind of what you'd expect but it does have a nice little bit of light crispness to it. And I do wonder if there's a little touch of Pilsner malt in there or something just to help crisp in that mouth view, uh, that, that um, the, the middle of your palate up a little bit actually. I really like how this, uh, how this whole thing goes together. On the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate you can pick up a teeny little bit of earthiness. As you come further forward there's a nice um, floral aromaticity that comes out the further forward you move towards the, the front corners of the tongue. It's got a little touch of a spicy note in the front corners of the palate then round the very front curve of the tongue it's just that little bit lighter and uh, grassy and behind the front curve of the tongue that's where you get that little oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to push their way out of the beer and for me this one, it, it kind of is quite similar to what I was expecting from the aroma. Yeah, so with this one definitely a little bit of passion fruit in there a little bit of mango as well and it does have that kind of apricoty kind of note too. Maybe there is a little touch of grapefruit or something in this beer um, I would say, yeah, I think there is a little bit of a grapefruity flavour there. You can just feel, if you go right towards the very back of the that kind of oily bubble that I'm talking about, there is just a little bit of a more dark quality to that oily bubble. So it could be the passion fruit, the mangoes in front of it, and then the more apricot-y notes just as you move towards the front of the palate. Um, I, if I was betting on what hops were in this, I always like to play guess the hops with these beers. I would say, I think there's Simcoe in here. I'm pretty sure it's Simcoe rather than Galaxy. It's not quite complex enough to be... Galaxy and potentially there's a little bit of citra being added into this one as well and um, but I would think this is mainly a Simcoe beer. I'd be very curious to know that actually. But overall as a session IPA very very nice and uh, I have to say thumbs up to both breweries on this one. You know it's not the most adventurous beer you're going to find from either of these breweries but I think it's one of these ones, I think I said the same about the Northern Monk one, it really is one of these beers where I think they've just met up and they've wanted to brew together and they wanted to do something kind of nice and sessionable without thinking kind of too much about it. This is just a nice easy going session IPA so um, yeah well done to both breweries on this one. I wouldn't hesitate to drink that again. Whether you're going to see it again I'm not quite sure but if you like for example the Ale Farm beers you're going to enjoy this one and if you like some of the lighter things you're going to find from uh, from Verdant as well you will enjoy this beer too. In terms of the mouthfeel then I would describe this beer as being fairly light bodied. Carbonation is uh, it's a little bit crisper on this one, it does have a little bit more activity in it than some of the other um, IPAs that I've had recently. The mouthfeel overall is more of a smooth one rather than anything else. Um, the the hoppy side of things, I'd say you're talking about 25 IBUs at most. You do get a little bit of green quality out of this one because of just how fresh I'm drinking it. But if you let it eat, if you let it sit for another week or so, I would feel that that most of that would go away. And um, nice juicy fruity notes to this one, very smooth in its fruity character as well, and a bit of sweetness and smoothness in the malt base. But overall, a really nice, um, interesting, quite drinkable IPA this one. So if you get the chance to try it, I highly recommend that you do. Just pick it up through the through the small partiers. So yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. So this one is the Session IPA, the Collaboration Session IPA with Verdant Brewing from Stiebert's Brewery in Gothenburg here in Sweden. Another really nice, easy going at drinkable beer. Pretty perfect for the summer to be honest with you and I do wonder if we will see this one again. But yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are, both from Stiebert's and from Verdant and I'm sure we'll return to review more beers from these guys in the fair near future. More likely that I review Stiebert's uh, very soon soon rather than the Verdant. Hopefully I can get a hold of a couple of Verdant beers for you. But thanks again for watching. Make sure you check out my social media and I'll catch you guys later. Until the next time, slander just now. See you soon. Skull.